The perfect drink. The perfect drink. The perfect drink. The perfect drink. The perfect drink is a podcast that combines amazing cocktails with the kind of infinite wisdom that can only come from a lifetime of poor decisions. So take a journey with everybody's favorite bartender. We can make some drinks, have some laughs, and who knows, you might even learn a thing or two. See you soon. Hey everybody, it's old HRK here, everybody's favorite bartender, and it is time for another episode of The Perfect Drink. We are coming at you back again from the friendly confines of the home bar. Um, last week we did uh, we did a My Buddies episode up in Chicago, it was super awesome, and we're definitely going to uh, get back up there again. We tried to go Saturday and it didn't work out with the Kentucky Derby and all that shit, so I don't know. But we'll get back up to My Buddies for another one. Um, Eventually, long term, I think it'd be fun to do one from my buddies with like some people there and then like maybe field some questions or something. I don't fucking know. But um, anyways, yeah, my buddies fucking uh, did stand up there a couple weeks ago. Fucking bombed. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, I don't think it was my fault. I blame the crowd. <laughs> I feel like my jokes were solid. Um, but you couldn't really hear me. I, the, the mic hangs and it was low and I'm tall. So it was like, I, I, feel, I, I don't know. Ashley said you couldn't hear what I was saying a lot of the time. So I don't know. But live and learn. You know what I mean? Next time I'm just going to either loop it around and hold and make it higher or hold it up to my face or something. But whatever. Uh, you know, I didn't bomb bomb. I just didn't do as good as I usually do. That's not important. Nobody gives a fuck about that. Uh, you know, fucking uh, tell you a little fun story. <laughs> the other day. I'm working on this bit about f- having a f- having fake jobs and people with fake jobs, like you know, like a comedian or a bartender. <laughs> like it's like it's not a real job. It's like a you know, and I've got some other examples that are real funny, and I don't want to share those because it's part of my act. But I was I was at the bar the other day, and I was uh, I was kind of trying to entertain the the. It was real slow, and there was like four waitresses and a bartender on staff, and like two people in the bar. So they were just like all sitting there. And I was just trying to be funny, and I said something about fake jobs, and I used teachers as an example. <laughs> and the only other fucking person in the bar was like over at a table with like her friend, and she must have been a teacher. And this lady starts fucking bitching at me, man. Like she goes full Karen and just like calls me an asshole, and I don't know what I'm talking about, and it's a hard job. I'm, so you know, old HRK man, you got two. You're at a real crossroads when that happens. You can apologize and be like, oh, "I was just a joke. I'm just being funny," and blah blah blah. Or you can fucking double down, you know, and back it up. And, uh, you know, that's what I fucking did. So I just went hard, man. I, I started talking shit. I don't know if you ever, if you went back and watched my uh, e-learning episode that, of the podcast I did, but I kind of cited some shit from that. Like, you know, teachers all act like they want to get back in the classroom real bad, but we all know it's bullshit. You know, and if they really wanted to, they'd go on strike, you know. And I just read something the other day about teachers are going to strike. Uh, if they have to go back to the classroom, you know what I mean? So it's like your true colors are coming out, motherfuckers. You just want to do laundry and, you know, grade four e-papers that students turn in and not leave your fucking house. And I don't blame you, but at least fucking admit it. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind, uh, your point of view. It's, it's the, you know, it's your stance on, it's how you, you know, it's that you're full of shit. That's all. That's my gripe. Uh, I know some teachers that are like, yeah, I'm a teacher. It's a fake job. It's fucking awesome. I work like 100 days a year. I fucking love it. I'm done at four. You know, this lady's like, we're working till 10 o'clock at night. Like, bitch, <laughs> shut the fuck up. 10 o'clock at night. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, God. So anyways, got in uh, got in, got in, a little heated debate at the bar with a stranger, uh, a, a true Karen, and uh, that was super fucking excited. Exciting. Excited? Sorry. Um, I've had guests on like the last like four shows, it feels like, and I, you know, I don't... Uh, I don't have a guest today, so I'm back down here by myself again. It feels uh, feels a little weird, you know. It feels a little um, I don't know, I don't know. It's fucking, uh, it's kind of weird. It's creeping, me, freaking me out. But I think we'll get through it. Um, I would love to know feedback on if you like it better with guests, you know, with uh, or by myself. Last week I had uh, Jenna Grishon, and she was more like a co-host than a guest. I didn't. It was you know, it's not like an interview format. We just did the show together and did some, you know, some question shit and whatever. But Anyways, I don't know. I'd like to know what everybody thinks is better. I can tell you that uh, when you have a guest, it's real easy to get it. To, it's it's hard to keep it under an hour. It's you know, and when you do, when I do it by myself, it's hard to get to thirty minutes. And uh, you know, that's I want to be in between thirty minutes and an hour on the show. So each of them are challenging in a different way. That said, uh, sipping on a delicious Michelob Ultra this morning, and uh, you know, we're gonna have some fun. Let's get into ripping shots. 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 
charts We've been charts We've been charts I'm stumbling a lot Right. Music for Ripping Shots brought to you by Willard Wilcox. Love that fucking dude. He's got some shows coming up in the area here, so I'm going to go see him at least a couple times. He's going to be at Anthony's and Juliet on Sunday at 1. He's got a show coming up at this place called Tavern in the Glen that uh, that Ashley and I hang out at a lot. And then um, I think he's got something at the White Horse in Lennox, too, that I recently uh, was asked to uh, not go back in there for a while. They didn't kick me out permanently. They just said, you got to take a little break. <laughs> I won't tell that story. It's not involving a teacher, but <laughs> they said, why don't you take a few weeks off and come back? I said, okay, no problem. I understand. I'm very friendly when someone's throwing me out for whatever that's worth. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's put this first fucking shot down. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing Honey Jack. I always forget if you're supposed to call it Honey Jack or Jack Honey, but that's what I'm fucking doing. We were going to do it the other week, and then we did some Dubliner instead, so I'm, I'm, that's what I'm going to do. I put it in the shaker and chilled it. Uh, because it's not noon yet, you know. In the afternoon, I drink shots warm, but in the morning, I drink them chilled. That's how I live my life. This week's ripping shots question is: Are breakups slash divorces contagious? What I mean by that is, you know, when you're uh, when you got a bunch of friends that are getting divorced or breaking up, does it make you more apt to like break up or get divorced? I sure think they are. But let's see what you think. First, uh, first answer from Shelby, St. Louis, Missouri, says, yes, after I divorced my ex-husband, all of his buddies that had been married for years got divorced as well. Uh, so there's, there's one for you. I can tell you that like overwhelmingly the answers were yes. One girl said maybe. <laughs> I don't remember the bitch's name, but I was like, well, thanks. That's super fucking profound. And there was one that was like, nah. But uh, everyone, everyone was like, yes. Uh, I mean, here's here's why it makes sense, man, because if all your friends are single, they want you to be single and they're all out having fun and you're at home, you know, fucking just <laughs> with some guy who's not in as good a shape as he was four years ago when you married him and whatever the fuck ever, you know, you've been banging him for four years. How much fun is it to still bang the same guy? Uh, I know I'm acting like women are the ones that initiate divorce, but I think women generally initiate divorce. Uh, I think it's, I don't think it's because that men don't think about it or want to. I think we're just lazy. <laughs> you know, so me and Ashley were talking this morning about, um, about like, I forget. It, it was kind of like about cheating, but not that it was about like, um, it was, a, it was based on a TikTok where the girl like doesn't trust the guy or something like that. And the point is like, <laughs> girls will catch guys and like all the time and guys never catch girls. And Ashley was like, do you think it's because we love you more? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a way to put a positive spin on your fucking untrusting ass, you know? <laughs> Super fucking clever. It's because we love you so much. That's why That's why we catch you, you know, or think we, you know, whatever. That's why we're always in your shit. Uh, and I think it's just about laziness. I think guys just, you know, don't, don't want to put energy into that kind of thing. We just go through the motions, you know what I mean? That Usually, most guys, that's kind of that's who we are, especially after... You know, you've been married to the same person for a while. You're probably in kind of a routine, and it's just like, man, well, this is okay. I'm just gonna keep doing this. But, um, but anyways, Shelby says, yeah, her friends all got divorced, or her husband's friends all got divorced uh, about the time she got divorced. Sarah from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin's got the best names, the best names of of their towns and cities of any state. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Must have been just overrun with engines because they're all like Indian sounding names. Walkers, Walkershaw, Paw, 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 Paw Patrol, I don't fucking know. But they're all got like an awe sound in them. So, I don't know. A lot, a lot of Indians. you think they would have gone south where it's warmer. But I guess if you got, uh, you got buffalo coat on, you don't give a fuck. Here we go. <laughs> Sarah from Oshkosh, Wisconsin says, My ex and I divorced the same time his best friend did. They even have the same custody schedule. Lame. That's called bromance. Uh, first of all, that sounds fucking awesome. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, you and your you and your best friend both become single at the same time. You both have your kids on the same days and no kids on the same days, so you can get the kids together and chill out together and be buddies. And then on the no kid days, you can go, you know, try to slam chicks. I don't know, man. That doesn't sound like such a bad fucking deal to me. 
I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that sounds fucking great. I think more people should, I think, I, here's what I think. I think people should not get married and they should just date and sign a contract to make a baby if they both decide they want kids and then just fucking work out the finances and the fucking, and the, and the baby schedule while they still like each other. Doesn't that make sense? Am I, I, I swear to God, I'm, to me, that's some genius. You meet someone, you start dating, you've been dating for a year. You decide you both want the same things. You both want kids. Life's good. And here's what you say. Okay, let's set up a schedule for the kids and finance stuff in advance if it doesn't work out. And then, you know, you could live together. Sure, whatever. But really, you're just... You know, because here's the thing: you you start to hate someone and you want to get divorced. It's going to cost you fucking a hundred thousand dollars in three years. You know what I'm saying? But if you if you set the divorce shit up while you get along, it will be super fair. It will be super cheap and it will be super fast. No one's trying to screw anybody. You're just fucking. Hey, this makes sense. If it doesn't work out because we like each other now, let's be reasonable and fucking figure this out. That's the best. That dude sounds like he hit fucking divorce jackpot. You know what I mean? He's got his best friend. I don't know. Those those two sound like that. If you got a best friend who's married with you, you you should try to line that up because it's a good fucking uh, it's a good deal. Uh, okay, last one. <laughs> Mother of fucking god, last one's from Ashley from New Lenox. Ashley is my girlfriend. She's been writing into the show a lot lately, <laughs> and she says uh, she says not contagious but definitely seasonal. Um, so what she's saying is, and I think what she's referring to is like, you know, in the fall, it's like cuffing season. You want to lock somebody down for the winter. So you got someone to spoon with, stay warm with under the, under the covers while there's snow on the ground. Summer rolls around and it's fucking hot girl summer, man. You know, you want to fucking party with your bitches. And, uh, so she's saying it's not that you get divorced cause you're, cause your friends are getting divorced. She just thinks as a whole, people want to be in a relationship in the fall and winter and single in the spring and summer. And that makes sense to me, too. Um, that said, summer's coming up, so maybe Ashley's setting me up for a, for a breakup. If so, I would understand. You know, hot girl summer's a real thing. Going to be a real bummer, but, you know, I just got to keep on keeping on. Um, any fucking ways. Uh, with that, talking about hot girl summer, let's make the drink. The drink is called... Summertime. I don't know if it's called summertime or the summertime. But here's how you make it. You start with a glass. As you do sometimes in cocktail making. You fill the glass with ice. I dropped one ice cube on the floor. We're going to leave that there. You're going to add an ounce and a half of vodka. We're going to use Dillinger vodka because that's how we fucking roll on this show. Dillinger vodka, smooth and delicious. You can find it in any fucking bar or liquor store in the Chicagoland area. Dillinger vodka, join the gang. We're going to add about an ounce, maybe three quarters of an ounce of um, of uh, dry vermouth. We're going to squeeze about a half a lime, a lemon in there. Get some lemon juice in there. You can use like just a, you know, a lemon juice thing, but I like to just squeeze it in there. I think it tastes better, obviously. You're going to top it off with tonic, except I don't fucking like tonic, so I'm using soda. But you can use tonic if you like it a little sweeter. I'm a, I'm a soda girl myself. And then you're going to garnish it. With a fucking grapefruit. Look how pretty that is. Old HRK using garnishes. Normally, I fucking hate garnishes. I think they're for the weak. But, uh, you know, I'm I'm getting in tune with my feminine side today. I might get my nails done later or something. So we're going to garnish it. Look at that. It looks ridiculous. <laughs> garnishes are the dumbest fucking thing in the world. Oh. And it is a refreshing drink. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. That's, uh, that's called summertime. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Try one. It's fucking delicious. Let's get back into, oh boy, sorry. Let's get back into this uh, this divorce talk. I can, t oh wait, I gotta rip that second shot. Or no, gotta rip that second shot. Hate when I do that. I can tell you that like, my, <laughs> when I was married, I can, I listen, I'm not saying that the reason we got divorced was because uh, my wife chummed up with a bunch of divorced whores and wanted to go, you know, hooch around at the bar. But I am saying that when I was married, my wife started working this job with a bunch of divorced whores. <laughs> and then she started going out a little bit with them. And I'm sure it was fun. And I'm sure she saw like, man, these girls are like going out and, you know, 
scheduling these dick appointments and having fun and partying and it's awesome and i I, (laughs) look don't fucking get it twisted when we were married i went out all the time and she was home all the time although she doesn't really like going out she's kind of a homebody but my point is uh (laughs) <laughs> we got divorced for like a thousand reasons and at least 978 of them were my fault so whatever but uh but she definitely like started hanging around some divorced women and then you know I came home one day and she was gone uh i will say that i respect her for leaving me instead of just sneaking around on me you know what i mean so that's that that, that hey that takes courage I, I and i and i respect it but there's definitely a correlation in my marriage between like you know friends that are doing it and then you doing it now that begs the question would it be possible like let's just say you're a married couple because the concept of it being contagious is this like your friends are all going out and having fun and you're like at home and it kind of just looks fun and let me tell you being divorced is nice man it's pretty awesome because you still see your kids all the time you fucking, uh, you know, you still get plenty of time with the kids. You get to do whatever you want on the no kid days. Most people I know would be like, like most people don't want to be a degenerate all the time. You know what I mean? Most of them want to be responsible most of the time and then get rewarded for that responsibility with like a day or two of total freedom. When you're married, you never really get total freedom. And I don't even mean freedom like to bang people. I just mean like, where are you at? What are you doing? No, you can't do that. You're in trouble. Like, you know, I, I don't know how many married guys I know that go golfing. And by the time they get to 16, their wife's texting like, where the fuck are you at? Get your ass home. You know what I mean? If you're divorced and it's your no kid Saturday, you could golf all day and then drink all night if you want. It's got nothing to do with wanting to fuck girls. So I think that uh, my point is most people that I know would gladly do the right thing for six days, even for 13 days. Or tw- let's say 12 days, 12 days in a row of like going balls to the wall, full adult adulthood. You know what I mean? And then you get two days to act like a fucking 20 year old again, you know? And that's what being divorced is, dude. And it's a good fucking trade. Cause like I said, nowadays, especially most people are getting equal time with the kids. You know, it's not like, it's not like 10, 15 years ago when dad's just fucking, you know, we're at the mercy of whatever the fuck kind of mood they're twat fucking ex-wife was in you know what i mean nowadays everybody's wives don't want full cut you know they want their guy to have them some of the days you know what i mean because they want to do shit too and they are tight and they deserve it so um you know yeah i think the getting divorced ain't too fucking bad but my original point was doesn't that beg the question like what if you're in a marriage where you both just give each other a day i don't know let's say let's say each get two days a month you take turns every fucking saturday the guy gets to go golf and fuck off and he can come home late and it's no big deal as long as he doesn't fall off the map and you know he stays in contact whatever and then the other saturday the girl gets to do the same fucking thing you know what i mean and then let's say you know and then obviously you got to do things together too you know so look you're, look here, i'm gonna holy shit it just hit me like a fucking ton of bricks you got four saturdays in a month right you're a married couple with kids here's what you fucking do one saturday is the dude's day one saturday is the wife's day one Saturday, you get a babysitter and you go do something nice together and it's got to be nice. And then one Saturday, you take the kids and the whole family goes and does something nice f- and fun together, like the zoo or like something like that's uh, that's an event, not just we're going to take a fucking walk. You know what I mean? Like it's a thing. I feel like I just solved the fucking American family problem. I l- listen, you know, the, you know, the real kick in the nuts is that 100 people are going to listen to this and you know, they're, they're, they're probably already divorced. <laughs> but man, I did, nobody, I, this is why, this is why I should record everything I ever say and think because every now and then I come up with something that's really pretty fucking special and I'm drunk and I forget it. <laughs> oh shit, man. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm in about 20 fucking minutes right now. I wish I could think of something else to say. Like I said, I've, I've been spoiled the last few weeks with a fucking a co-host or a guest, and it's been easy to, uh, to not have to talk as much. Um, I don't fucking know. I got a show coming up in Joliet in a few weeks, so that's pretty fucking awesome. Uh, and I've been trying to like, I made a reel. So a reel is like a, you know, it's like a highlight film essentially of your stand-up. And I made what I've been sending to some people. 
And uh, so I'm, I'm trying to, you know, up till now I've only gone through one like production company and I'm trying to like get out there with some different people and, and get on the stage more, you know, cause uh, that's how you, that's how you improve. So hopefully I'll, uh, hopefully I'll be coming to a stage near you soon. I can make you laugh or bomb like I did last time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll have a great fucking, uh, we'll have a great fucking time. Let's make this last call. I swear to God, this is a 15 minute long fucking episode. I might have to like add a little section in the middle and edit it in. But for now, let's just make this last call. I forgot to drink that drink. That's how I know. Um, <laughs> Jesus. That's how I know that I didn't talk very long today because the drink was like completely full when I did last call. And I didn't even finish it, so I better finish it real quick. It is a refreshing cocktail. All right, so last call. Let's sum things up. Number one, if you're a teacher, you have a fake job, fuck you. I don't mean fuck you. Uh, because you're a bad person or I don't like you. I mean, fuck you if you're acting like, you know, you've got this hard, hard, hard job. Number two, uh, there's a cocktail called Summertime. It's hot girl summer coming up. So I would say make one, drink one, and uh, enjoy one. And number three, look, we just learned the fucking secret to marital success. Give the guy one Saturday, the girl one Saturday, date night one Saturday, and family night one Saturday. Holy fuck. I'm really something. With that, let's get the fuck out of here. Sorry for the 15-minute long podcast. I'm a little rusty. And uh, your mom's dusty. Peace out. Thanks for listening to The Perfect Drink. Remember, you can always hear me first on Be Positive Radio every Monday at 1 p.m. If you miss me there, all episodes are available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you might listen to your podcasts. Be sure to like, subscribe, and tell a friend. If you're interested in being a guest on the show or you just want to tell me how much you like me, feel free to send me an email at hrkpresents at gmail.com or just slide into my DMs like your mom does. See you next time.